Welcome to the MWG podcast. This is Whispering Tears, and I'm joined with uh, Masta and Westidius. And today we have our first artist guest, Choknader. Uh, Choknader? Yeah. What's up? I think it's really funny you guys call me an artist because, like, before I was an artist, like, full time. Mm -hmm. You, I, mm -hmm. I met, I, I, I think I, I met Moss as a gamer, right? Yeah. And you know, as first I was, I was only known as, as a Smash player. Yeah, melee. <laughs> And now I'm an artist, so I find that interesting. <laughs> you can be both. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so artist slash smash player. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, Andre, Choke, uh, just uh, maybe give us a quick introduction. Tell us a little bit about yourself, how you started as a gamer, the origin of your gamer tag. Go for it. Oh, I guess I can start with the gamer tag. Um, mm. Jokenator, I mean, it doesn't really mean anything now, but uh, are any of you Filipino? Yeah. I am. Yes, me, nice. uh, Mas, and I. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you guys know the snack choke nut? Oh, snack. Yeah, I do. It came from that. It came oh, from nice. That. Yeah. Um, I My family actually used to have a dog named Choke Nut. So my first AOL screen name when I was like five years old was Choke Nut 57. And then one day my cousin just met, messed with, messed around with it, and he called me Choke Nader. And I was like, I kind of like that. So it stuck. I was only like 12 years old, um, nice. and it, it stuck. Uh, you know, sometimes you get those embarrassing names, like Sephiroth Slayer, 69, or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but no, yeah, I had Choke Nader and it stuck. So, um, but yeah, as far as like who I am, uh, I'm right now, I just got a new job as a part-time art teacher in Tracy. Oh, nice. Um, oh, nice. Uh, these, uh, but for five years, I've been doing freelance. So doing commissions, uh, animation, illustration, portraits, a lot of the various stuff. Um, okay. Yeah, so I've been doing that. But yeah, uh, Choke Nader, I'm, I'm mostly known as Choke Nader as a Smash player. Um, I mean, I, I got started. I, I, I've always been into fighting games. That was always my thing. Uh, I, played, I played a lot of different games, but I suck at like most everything except fighting games. Um, I, I started I, I started Street Fighter and Mortal Kombat when I was like five years old. Mm -hmm. and yes. I discovered Smashboards and Shoryuken around the same time in like 2002. Because mm. uh, I was on GameFAQs. You guys remember GameFAQs? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Classic. That was the best yeah. place. I don't know how old. I, I'm 31. I, I, am I like the oldest one here? Or are you guys? No. We're... We're the same age okay. more or less yeah, yeah. I'm, I'll, I'll be 28 i'll be 28 in, in like a couple months and then yeah, yeah we're more or less next month so. more or less that yeah 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 well I, I was like 10 or 11 when i was on game facts and then it led me to smash boards and shoryuken where i like started following the tournament scene really early on like the beginning of the tournament scene for um for smash for melee and then i i think the fgc had already existed for a while at that point like with evo um, but then I started following Evo. Um, and so I pretty much wanted to play anything that people were playing in my area. Like, I, I was on Marvel, too. Um, it's actually probably my favorite game. I probably like it more than Melee. But there were Melee players around me and their tournaments, so I, I got more into Melee. Um, but yeah, I play all kinds of games, but uh, that, genre, that time period of fighting games was my favorite. Like, Melee, Marvel 2, Third Strike. Dude, that's one of the best yeah. first strike yeah. time period for fighting games. CBS yeah. 2 was around. CBS 2, yeah. Like no patches, broke uh unbalanced tier lists, that stuff. Like we I grew up with it and all the crybabies now stuff. talking about patches and stuff. I'm like oh, okay. <laughs> all <laughs> well, the cheap now, stuff. Well, now I know what Chick Chokenator feels about this era. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. fair. I actually <laughs> I agree with you. Yeah. So real quick, who was the team in NBC2? Oh, um, Back in the day, I was clockwork. Uh, oh, oh. Right. that's my favorite. But it's really hard. And um, I picked up the game recently again. Uh, and I, I really like Iron Man, uh, you know, Avengers, Marvel movies. Yes. So, and okay. I knew Iron Man was good. So I was like, okay, I'm going to drop Strider. He's really difficult. Uh, I'm going to try Iron Man. And I, I learned the infinite. And it's really funny because, you know, Melee Ice Climbers has wobbling. Oh, um, yes. Infinites. So I was like, this is kind of my, kind of in, in my field. Kind of style. I yeah. like infinites. Okay. So, yeah. You like so can you do the uh, fly on fly combos? With Iron Man? No. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, that's really hard. 
That looked hard. Eh? <laughs> the, the first thing I wanted to learn was the infinite. And it's not, it was pretty easy. It was harder than wobbling for sure, but it, it was, uh, it took me like a couple of days. Okay. Okay. That's All good. Right. Yeah, I I respect that. You know, you like the infinite. Just goes to show like where where you come from, right? A lot, a lot of people now, if you like, even mention anything with like an infinite, they'll be like, no, 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 pass it out, pass, pass it out. There's gonna, there's gonna be a Reddit thread, Twitter's in shambles. Like it's yeah. it's all that. Actually, it, it kind of frustrates so me that because you, you know like nowadays games are like kind of well balanced, and it's mm-hmm. funny because I'm kind of frustrated by that because I want to find the most broken character always whenever uh-huh. I play a new game. And like with Smash Ultimate, the game's really well balanced, so I, I can't really find someone who just resonates with me. Like, oh, this is broken. I want to use it. You know. Right, right. I agree with you. A lot of diversity in um, a lot of diversity, diversity in Ultimate, and yeah, actually, I actually do uh, agree with you. Like, people will always have debates about like X or Y or whatever, but um, but yeah, there's no like one character that's like, you know what I mean? At least compared to before, right? Like. Yeah. just be hilariously broken but yeah. but yeah no I, I agree with you and then like it just has like just it being that way kind of had a certain charm to it and it also forced yeah. you to get better right like for the ice climbers with yeah. ice climbers right you just don't get grabbed that's that yeah. was the so yeah <laughs> i know that feel yeah i, I we mm. come from that that era of mm-hmm. yeah right 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 so is that why you play ice climbers like is it because they had wobbling? It's actually not necessarily. I actually okay, picked, okay. I picked up Ice Climbers in like 2006 before wobbling was popular. Okay. Um, so, but they already they still had chain grabs. Uh, so it's kind of like a 50 50. But in those times, people didn't know how to escape the 50 50. So it was still pretty much an infinite. Um, okay. So, uh, I was actually I made Fox and Falco first. Right. Um, you know, really popular characters, uh, the fastest characters. But I was actually the first time I ran into as a player named KFC. Uh, he beat me, um, and I and then he brought a whole crew of players from Stockton. Uh, they came to Modesto because I was like, you know, I, I I was always the best player in Modesto for as long as I lived there. Mm-hmm. Um, and then they brought the whole crew, and they they were beating me, and I was like, man, who are these guys? And I was just watching videos, and I was like, Chud- I saw Chudat playing Ice Climbers. And I was like, this looks pretty cheap. So I learned it. And it, it didn't take me very long to learn, like, the chain grabs and stuff. Um, and, uh, yeah. I, and then I won the next tournament after that. So I was just like, oh, this character is really cheap. And I just kept using it. I wish, in retrospect, I wish I didn't switch, actually. Mm-hmm. I wish I stayed Fox because Fox is just way better. Mm-hmm. He's actually the cheapest character. <laughs> yeah, he is actually the cheapest character. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I actually mm-hmm. recently switched back to Fox. Uh, you get did you okay. guys watch um, Smash Summit with Mango and Zane? I caught yes. a little bit. At grand Finals. I I, I watched. Uh, I caught the yeah. Grand yeah. yeah, that was Pretty so well. hype. I actually it was. I, I kind of want to go back to Fox after that. After like fifteen years of playing Ice Climber. Uh huh. <laughs> Fox, Fox this is very fun. Like people don't yeah. like a lot of people, it's including myself too. Like when I played melee a, a long time ago. I was like, yo, I see this, I see this guy on the vods all the time. Like he's kind of sleep. And then I played yeah. it myself, and I was like, yo, this is kind of cheap. Like this is why everybody played. <laughs> <This Yeah. laughs> <laughs> so, don't blame you. Good character, great character. Yeah, that's not, that's how I am. I, I always want the best character. Like people mm-hmm. say, pick characters you like. I guess I'm doing that with Iron Man and Marvel, but. Like I'm down to play Magneto, you know. I'm down to play Cable. Like I just want to pick the characters that are super cheap. I just feel like you, you know, people talk about in games, you want to make good decisions. And to me, character select is the first decision you make, right? So mm, I like that. Yeah, you. Yeah, I like that. That's true. Yeah, that's that's true. You know, a lot of people will, you know, they they'll sometimes they'll even know their character is like weaker than you know whoever else and. Yeah. They'll still be like, "Yo, what, what do you mean?" They'll be like, "Devs, please, like, help. What is this?" And yeah. when really they have the they have the option them like it's in front of them. Like, you just pick the kid. It's good, dude. Just just pick your Bardock, pick your Magneto. You know, pick yeah. Cable, like, yeah. um, pick Virgil, whatever it is, right? So yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like for me, if I if the character's cheap, I will learn to love them for whatever uh-huh. whatever character okay. it is. Um, mm-hmm. I don't really care that much about the lore. Um, I mean, mm-hmm. I'm sure it will visually look cool, but if the character... Okay, so how I see it, this is the way I really, really see it. Mm-hmm. My favorite playstyle 
is if I can if I can turn a two player game into a one player game. <laughs> yes, oh. you <laughs> love <laughs> to see it. Yeah. <laughs> if I can make my opponent do nothing, and they just die, like that's my favorite. Oh man, you know it's just, it's funny with the air, arrow and fighting games that we're in yeah. Yeah. now. I guess people I try to. Space. I don't want to. <laughs> it's still possible. I don't want. I don't want spacing. I want them <laughs> dead and trapped. You know. <laughs> yeah, I, I, dude. What better? To, honestly, turning a two-player game into a one-player game is so much fun. Like when you're it the is. one doing it, like it just yeah. is. Yeah, I agree. I, you know what I mean. So a lot of these guys. You know, they'll, they'll complain. And you know what? A lot of times the complaints are, there are fair complaints, but the fact of the matter is in, you know, a competitive environment, there's just always going to be something cheaper than everything else. Yeah. And like, yeah. you just, what are you going to do? Not take advantage of it? Yeah. So, I mean, either that or you got to get good with your character. You know, that's kind of the charm of playing low tier characters as well. Is like, if you yeah. do well, it's not like nobody recognizes it. We for sure do. Right. But, I mean, I've, I've thought about this a lot, and um, mm-hmm. the thing is, nowadays, with, with the games being well-balanced, uh, I mean, character loyalty can take you really far. Um, right. Because if you know the ins and outs of the character, you know their weaknesses and strengths, you can play to the strengths, and you learn the counterplay to all the good characters, like, you, I mean, you're going to be fine. Um, but ultimately, like, the thing about Melee and Marvel 2, they've had 10 years, no patches to evolve. 20 years, even. Right. Um, so imagine there, Smash Ultimate, 80 plus characters, at some point, uh, there's going to be no more patches. And at some point, there's going to be one character with a matchup web um, that's just way better than everyone else's. And that character is going to be really popular. That, pop- that character is going to be really explored. And eventually, it, they, someone might discover that that character has no bad matchups. Like, um, I'm just thinking, um, you know, long term. I, like you want to be searching for that those qualities in a character like they're adaptable they they have kill potential they have kill pressure they have combos they have speed they have everything there's always going to be mm-hmm. that one character that kind of has everything mm-hmm. as long as you yeah. don't patch a game and let it be explored right uh-huh yeah i yeah. i just think i just think we're in a different time that's it yeah. like that's just the time that we're in now because patches are just so yeah. um e- either so accessible now that like that's just we just gotta take yeah, it. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. And you're right. There might never come a day where there's no patches anymore. Uh huh. But if they like, kind of like how League is, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So and you also have to consider they're always trying to patch toward like a fifty percent win rate. They don't want anybody with a sixty <laughs> percent. Yeah. I want a hundred. I want a hundred percent. Yeah. <laughs> like it. We're transparent out here. This is what I like to hear. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's how I am. I mean, like I, you know, I, I'm, I'm kind of out of the scene now. I, I don't really enter tournaments anymore. Uh-huh. I enter like online melee tournaments from time to time, but I always lose. Like, um, hey, we don't talk about those. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it is what it is. But like when I was playing, I, I was always like really, really thinking hard. Like, what is the best possible thing to do? Uh huh. Yeah, they're 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 so good now. Like, if you're if you got like another hobby going on or you got another passion, and you're not grinding a game all day now. Like yeah. you just get left, like right, yeah. It's like very top heavy now. I mean, it, it's always been, but um, because nowadays, I mean, as long as you got a successful stream, you, you can go pro and you yeah. practice all day. Like, I don't imagine anyone catching up to Mango and Zane right now if they're not sponsored, right, or if they don't have right. like a, yeah, you know, can stream twenty four seven. Uh huh. Yeah. yeah that's kind of how gaming is now. I mean, there's esports has been a thing for a while and it's, it's developing. People have teams. People have their houses where they can grind at you know coaches uh-huh. all that yeah yeah it's a, it's a profession it's literally a profession now yeah. and it's i think it's even funnier too is how like gamers will talk about how what are you 27 28 29 boomer there's be like oh you're old in esports you're old yeah. like that's actually oh, it's yeah. funny to me it's funny like, <laughs> well i mean you also I, I i tend to take into account that young people have better reaction time too uh-huh okay that's why a lot of times that you'll have some random 16 year old just rise to the top in some game i'll often uh-huh. do this because they just think faster um and it's just kind of the human brain it's kind of how it works right 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 yeah. <clears throat> um but uh but yeah pr- pretty uh yeah, it's pretty nice to hear your you know hear, hear your take you know a lot we're still so we'll you know we're still you know doing events for um uh, in particular ultimate right and then oh, yeah. we actually talked to a lot of these 
younger guys pretty often. And they're all cool. You know, a lot of the younger, you know, people, younger people in, in the scene, they're, you know, they, I see a lot of the passion that I, I've had or, and, or have, and, you know, they're, they're, they're fun to talk to, but, yeah. um, but yeah, but be, having you here um, and just being, being blunt and being like, Hey, you know, hundred percent win rate, you know, it's something that's cheap. <laughs> you know, you know what I mean? I'm, it's, I'm, it's nice to hear. Like, yeah. I, I like it. Like, seriously. I mean, I'm a bit curious about it because I mean, I left the scene a quote unquote retired in 2016 mm-hmm. uh, when smash four was out. And, you know, a lot of the guys in Modesto, which you guys have probably met like, um, I don't know, vision miracles. I don't know if you know those guys. Yeah. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. striker uh you know those guys are all young and i i know that they're emotional players i don't know if it's still but i know they've matured within the fgc they all play like they also play like the other fighting games uh i don't know whatever they want whatever they play like blaze blue under night all that stuff mm-hmm. anime games um so they've they've all matured but i still think that the the takes that they have on fighting games um i i, I personally i still think the old school take is the best that Mm -hmm. you want to win i I think my favorite player of all time in any fighting game is tokido because oh yeah yeah so he is a person that is just completely optimized in everything he does like i remember i think evo 2013 or 2012 or something he top aided in like almost every single uh featured game um Mm -hmm. but because he got second in street fighter he dropped every other game for street for street fighter and then eventually he won Street Fighter at Evo. And to me, that's so inspiring because like he's so talented and so good at figuring out games. And he was also a player who was like, I'm just going to pick a top tier and figure out the cheapest thing. But Basic, not, yeah. it, and, and, and he's not just doing it to take the easy way out. He's doing it because he knows it's the best. And if he, if he like hones it, if he refines it, um, no one can beat him. And that's I, I think that if more players, if more new players had that kind of like really strict like approach to the game like you really actually want to win you don't want to just be like i'm here to have fun i'm here to i'm here to play the character that i like um you know like winning is really different like winning by nature is unfair does that make sense mm-hmm. yes right. no i i agree it, it, yeah, it's, I, could, I could get that mm-hmm. wow. so that, that's just how i see it right um no yeah seriously like a lot of people like they'll they'll try to, I guess they try to find a balance between winning and having fun yeah. and, and the definition of fun being like, this is what they want to do. Right. Yeah. It's just, but the truth is, is sometimes you just don't get, I mean, it works out sometimes a lot of guys who have to work harder yeah. than someone playing top tier. And that's, that's more than okay. I think that's great. Yeah. Right. I think, it creates, the, I think it makes for great narrative. Mm-hmm. Uh, like if you get some low tier hero, like they, they actually win a tournament. That's really awesome. Mm-hmm. Right. And it could be that that character is not actually low tier. It could be maybe that player is bringing out potential that wasn't seen before. And that's, that's always a possibility, right? Mm-hmm. Because when you're picking a top tier, it's kind of vague as to what is actually a top tier. It's like based on what everyone's observed or based on the actual potential that is possible to unlock in that game. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but like, but like just again, winning and like having fun is just, um, I, it's, it kind of sucks to say it, but sometimes you have to choose. Like, you know what I mean? If you, if, if you're doing, if you're doing this, you're playing a certain way and you know, it's not working, you have a choice. You know what I mean? Like you, yeah. you either, you, 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 you get better and you, you work harder than a lot of people do, or you just pick a top tier character. It doesn't mean you don't have to work hard. It just means it's not going to be as much of an uphill battle, but, but yeah, sometimes seriously, you just either chick choose to win or do you want to play If you want to play this way, well, you're going to have to accept that there are drawbacks to the way you want to do this. Yeah. And you know, that's kind of just the, and that's just not just video games. That's just, in, I'm going to be honest. Let's, oh, yeah, yeah. In, in general, so. <clears throat> yeah, I, um, I think, I mean, uh, styles make fights, right? Like, uh, um, I think everyone, no matter how far you want to, you know, pick a top tier, be the best and win, um, there's going to be tendencies that you have as a player that you're just going to do, like, things that really, you're, you're like, rewards your brain's dopamine system like if you're a grappler player you can still win a tournament like that right you can be a grappler and you got to get the reads and um it's usually not the best strategy usually not top tier but some people it's just how their style it's just the way they think um so i think there's you got to balance that out too Mm -hmm. because everyone has their own way of playing like me i want to trap my opponent that's Mm -hmm. my way um, some people maybe they want to zone maybe some people want to rush down and i think you can resonate with the style um but ultimately mm-hmm. what you have to do is refine it so that it 
wins every single time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. And you can get some people who choose one character and try to play it in the wrong style, like myself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm rushing down with anybody I pick up. Yeah. <laughs> oh. But no, I mean, uh, I mean, sometimes I get it with the, the younger dudes who, you know, you pick a character that you like and you'd rather push them to the limit. Because, I mean, that's how I usually play. I'll pick who I like and then try to get the best I can but when it comes to tournament I'm not gonna pick my favorite character yeah yeah pick the best one yeah yeah mm -hmm. yeah, yeah I, I know a lot of people there's probably got a lot of people gonna hear that and be like uh oh, you know you're wrong you're a boomer whatever but like <laughs> I said the games are still young like Smash Ultimate Tekken whatever it's there the games are still young and it's too early to say which character is actually the best character in those games right oh yeah yeah um but like I said, if you let a game develop for 10 years, no patches, um, it's going to, you'll eventually, get, you will get imbalance. Yeah, it'll get solved. Mm -hmm. Oh, that, that brings up another thing. Uh, recently, I'm seeing a lot of the younger guys say, oh, man, Ultima is dead because there's not going to be a new DLC. That's ridiculous. This is when it starts. Yeah, it's exactly. Yeah, no, that's, yeah, that's the beginning. Yeah. That's the beginning. That's when we can finally see what happens to the evolution of the game because you know, Pichu could have been top tier, whatever, but then it gets it gets patched, right? Pichu got a lot of nerfs, um, and they keep buffing the low tiers, and and for, somehow, B Sakurai and Bandai Namco are actually like seeing they're they're making like legitimate changes most of the time. Their their patch philosophy is really good, from what I've seen. Um, so, but yeah, like you said, that's when it starts. That's when we can it's finally when the game finally gets to evolve the right way. Yeah, you can you build know, technology just... from there. Exactly. Yeah. People finally get to explore and understand what this game can actually do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You guys see that one um, trick with Banjo Kazooie where you can like pivot and shoot eggs in both directions, like every single, like every other frame or something? I did not yeah. know you could do that. That's pretty no, cool. It's, it's crazy. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. There's still a lot to be, um, still a lot to be dis discovered. You know what I mean? I mean, yeah. Uh, people talk about they're, they're still talking about melee to this day, right? So, yeah, yeah. you know, if it, it, ultimate could be that game for a lot of these younger guys, you know, this is gonna be out for a long time. Maybe they don't want to pick up anything else. And yeah, um, yeah and then well, uh, it, who knows? There could be a character that comes out of left field, and somehow they've been broken the whole time. It's just yeah. we're not passing the game no more. No more yeah. DLC. Yeah. And, no, like like I said, that that I always think about like as soon as ultimate came out, I'm like, okay, who's the best character, right? Um, and I've been thinking about it a lot. I don't play that much, um, mm -hmm. but I have theories. I have my theories. Okay. Um, okay. I can I can mention. I mean, really early on, I thought Palutena was really really solid. Mm -hmm. I don't know if she's the best. I don't know if she has any broken qualities. But I'm trying to think about like which what characters have like certain values that are just extremely unbalanced. Um, mm -hmm. I do think Ice Climbers can still one touch. Um, usually, it doesn't mean they're top tier, but in, in Brawl, it made them top tier. Um, in melee, they made them top tier uh, until they banned wobbling. Um, so I still think Ice Climbers can one touch, but their neutrals like probably lacking because their mobility is pretty bad. Mm -hmm. um, I I think Ken is really good. Um, really? Because because uh, when you uh, when if you can hit, hit confirm into uh, True Sure you can you can kill at like seventy something like that. So I think that's kind of not balanced. And then I haven't really looked at Kazuya. I feel like his mobility is probably really lacking, but. If, I feel like if you master it, that's also really good. So I don't know. I have my theories, but again, I don't play. They're probably I'm probably wrong. Mm -hmm. There are probably people with way better opinions than me. But th that's mm -hmm. my take. I think Ice Climbers and Ken are really good. Mm -hmm. This is the first I've heard of Ken, but I, I see where you're coming from. Yeah. Because once he gets those, when you see the Ken combos on Twitter. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This, no, yeah, that's they're like lab characters. Yeah. So I think those always have a lot of potential. Right, because well, the thing with Smash too is that typically the characters that um they just have really um really oppressive like normals or like they just you know they just have something that's like not really that difficult to do but super cheap, yeah. right? And you can kind of just do it the whole game. Yeah, those guys definitely you know flourish. You know, you got you got you got Palutena's Nair and you got Wolf. You know, you got Wolf who who's, who's oh, just yeah, you know yeah you play got Wolf and you got a lot of these guys uh, Wario as as well, but. Um, but no, you see, I, I can see that too because you know, with lab a lab character like Ken or maybe even Kazuya, I don't know, it's still early. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
you know, if you get certain things and you hit confirm these things, yeah. you can, man, you're dying. Like you said, at like what, 70, 80, right? And it's like yeah. going to be like a DP. Yeah. And you, Unlike you can't di out, you get no di is not gonna save you there. You're just gonna get hit. You're gonna take it, and you may or may not die. So yeah, I can see that. And there, there, you always have to like weigh what is more valuable than another thing. Because I know in Japan, I heard that everyone in Japan hates Min Min, right? Because mm-hmm. a lot of characters just don't have any counterplay against Min Min. I don't see personally see Min Min as being one of the best characters, but I do see her as a character that invalidates a lot of other characters. You know, mm-hmm. like I can't see a matchup like. Min Min versus, I mean, Little Mac is a kind of a poor example because everyone beats Little Mac, but um, <laughs> like I, I can see Min Min invalidating a character like Marth, for example. Like, what is he gonna do to get in? You know, he's he's just outranged in every in every scenario. So I don't know. That's yeah. that's another right, right. thing that can happen. Yeah, it, it it's cool how another country completely can just have can can you know can have a have a have a take like this and it's more than welcome i think it's great here you know because like there'd be stuff you'll hear from america and you still hear stuff where you're like europe or like japan or anything like that and yeah it's more than uh yeah and then oftentimes it's more than than valid you know what i mean yeah marth can do nothing it was a mark <laughs> seriously oh, you yeah. can't fare your way to victory there it's <laughs> yeah. not happening so yeah it just sounds really tough mm-hmm. yeah, she took everything he wanted to do does it 100 times better <laughs> yeah oh man but yeah that's interesting with japan they have a whole different play style mm-hmm. yeah yeah they're, they're very methodical in their approach to most games but even in japan like you see players with different styles you see your rushdown players and grapplers in japan too mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so with the last dlc on the way who do you think who would you want it to be dude i have no clue i you know i'm i'm an old man yeah. <laughs> we I, all love. you know I, I, <laughs> I grew up with 64 uh-huh. so even when i saw melee characters like oh falco's in the game i was i was already hyped you know <laughs> right, right, okay. so like so many years of characters just getting added to smash at, at this point in ultimate i feel like i've seen it all and every uh-huh. character is a pleasant surprise to me so i don't really care uh-huh. but it would be cool to see, I guess, Sora. Like he, he just makes so, sense. Oh, yeah. I don't know if Disney will let him, but that'd be <laughs> sick. I think Sora would be cool. It would be a very good, like cherry on top. To the key, the Keyblade. Yeah, the, you know what I mean. <laughs> the Keyblade. Key, is, is, is it? Oh. Is it? Is it a sword? Is it a key? <laughs> I'm not sure. It's a blade, man. <laughs> it's a key. <laughs> Looks like a key to me. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Or is a classic. He so, is. You said you're, you know, old man, classic gamer. What system did you start on? Dude, NES. NES, the original? Mm, yes. Oh, it was a classic, classic. <laughs> or, or Game Boy. I'm not sure which one I touched first. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you, you had Pokemon, I'm sure. NES, um, even before Pokemon, like uh, Tetris on the Game Boy. Okay. NES, you know, Super Mario Bros. One, like that was my generation, dude. I'm really mm-hmm. showing, showing my age here. I can't believe it. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's all right. We we all played those games too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, is that right? I think Super Nintendo was mine. I had SNES. NES, NES was by my yeah. first system. So, been there, they're right there with you on that one. <laughs> yeah, it was my dad. Like he would play uh, mm-hmm. Mario. We had this old Ninja Turtles game on the NES. That, that had game had. is hard as hell. Yeah, it is. You, <laughs> I, I think we're talking about the same one. Is there a level where you have to like swim, and then you have to you got uh, like, yeah heated by seaweed? Yeah, that's that level's impossible. You, you had me at Those swim. Those games are freaking hard. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, hate, hate swimming levels. I don't know why they always have to put swimming levels. <laughs> it's just, it's like the rite of passage for single player games. It, it's it's funny. I don't think it's ever like even with games now. I don't even think swimming levels now. If you're in the water, it's if it's any more enjoyable than it was 20, 30 yeah, years yeah. ago. No one likes swimming levels. <laughs> but that's about it. <laughs> so what are some games on N64? That's what that's like my first like yeah my first console SNES. But that's like the game or that's the the console where I really was like oh man like I I'm all about this. What about N64? You got any titles N64 uh, like come up in your mind? I mean Smash. <laughs> oh yeah think, of course yeah i think um i could have gone to two routes because i got really into smash and really into pokemon um okay 
I think I, I was like 10 years old. And at that point, I was already like dedicated to um, either one of those series. Uh, I played Pokemon until the fifth generation. And then I had to stop. I just knew I had to stop because I was like, I spent so much time on this and I could be spending time doing something else, like playing uh-huh. Smash. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> uh, I, but I continued going to tournaments. I think what I enjoyed about Smash was the social aspect at that point. Okay. Um, but yeah, I played Pokemon for a really long time and I played Pokemon Stadium. Because uh, yeah, that's why I brought up Pokemon uh, for N64 because Pokemon Stadium 1 and 2, um, I would those were really challenging. I mean, I, I, I beat them when I was like a teenager, like 13, but uh-huh. they were really tough. To figure out oh yeah they, they they were it was cool seeing the pokemon on the big screen too because at the time i was just so used to you know seeing them uh just on my game boy game boy advance whatever but yeah um you know, it was a big deal and but, oh 3d oh yeah i know that the um that stadium and i think stadium 2 had different mechanics than like the game boy games yeah did you actually like have, like do you figure all that stuff out too while you were playing or? oh i i actually didn't know it had different mechanics Mm. Yeah, I think um, I can't remember which ones it are, but they do. They definitely have different mechanics. Like I know in Gen One, if you like KO a Pokemon with like Hyper Beam, Hyper Beam. you don't oh, have yeah, to yeah, charge. Yeah. Oh, wait, are you <laughs> saying I, that? Are you saying that uh, Gen Two was different mechanics from Gen One, or are you saying that Stadium had different Stadium mechanics? itself had different mechanics from the Game Boy games? Mm-hmm. Oh, that's oh, weird. okay. I didn't know oh, that. That's weird. I did not know that either. It was like a. It was the first patch, basically. They fixed yeah. a couple of glitches. <laughs> uh, the toxic leech seed glitch was fixed too, I think. Oh, I do remember that one. Is that only Gen 1? Yeah, I think that's only Gen 1. Oh, okay. Yeah. Wait, hold up. Y'all remember the mini games though? Yeah. Oh, dude, those are yeah, the best. Was... That's why you can oh. still whip out Stadium from time to time. Yeah. Play, oh, wow. Enjoy with family. Enjoy some couch gaming, which is also couch. fun. Couch nowadays. gaming. It'll be sweatier than it'll ever be at 27. I don't care. I'm still getting sweaty. <laughs> <laughs> the family were you know i'm, I'm mashing a i'm yeah. sure that's a bit <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <sighs> classic classic game um yeah i, I mean it could again could have been i, I play i remember ocarina of time i was actually big on snes too but um mostly play street fighter on snes okay yes another classic street fighter 2 yeah street fighter 2 street fighter 2 oh. A classic. Hmm. I mean, that's a lot of competitive uh, genres right there. Street yeah. Fighter, Pokemon. Oh, yeah. I, I, what I like about them, I mean, the games are so solid that, I mean, they're popular to this day with yeah. the new iterations. I mean, those, I guess I had good taste. Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> oh, I agree. <laughs> I agree. Yeah. <laughs> so did you play Pokemon competitively, like go to any of the tournaments or anything? No, um, nah. Uh, I, I, I guess it was hard because I always followed, like, you know, you guys know VGC? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There's VGC Pokemon. I had never been to one. It would have been cool. Mm-hmm. Um, but I guess it's because it's hard. To, it was hard for me to find other players, other gamers who also were that into Pokemon. Like, I was down, mm-hmm. but um, I was always, I was also, like, a kid, so I couldn't really go out of my way to buy a lot of games um so what i did was i got those free net battles like i started with net battle and then there was shoddy battle and now there's pokemon showdown where yes. you can still play the latest games for um you know build a team uh lab them out you know all optimized level 100 you don't have to actually train mm-hmm. them um and you could do that for free so i kind of just went off that so i was competitive on those but i never got like high ranked or won, won any tournaments gotcha. or anything like that and finally, Wait. somebody else who knows about Showdown and Shoddy Battle. Right. Yeah, man. <laughs> I I knew I knew I just never I never got into that. Like I was always I was always you know focused on fighting games, you know, and uh-huh. and, and the yeah. But like I I knew um, that the how in depth that gets is so fascinating. Yeah. To me, I I just I I literally, I got a taste of that yeah. realm, and there's a lot going on in competitive Pokemon. Yeah, what, what's funny is that my style from fighting games carries over to Pokemon. Oh, you wouldn't yes. think that you wouldn't think that like styles carry over like from a fighting game to a turn-based RPG. But my favorite strategy in Pokemon is to paralyze and confuse the Pokemon at the same time. Oh paralyze my them god. Them. I, because I want to force my opponent to gamble. 
you know i want to trap them i want them to be able to do nothing that's my favorite strategy <laughs> Oh my gosh, that is that's so. I'm sure there's some kind of counterplay, but oh man, is that outside yeah, just, looking it's in? It's very annoying. Yeah. It is. Yeah. yeah my favorite Pokemon move in the game is Glare. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Good. It's the only. It's the only move with 100 percent, 100 percent paralysis. Oh my goodness, that that you know what that is? It's it's comedy to me. It, it's it's uh what do you what is it? It's um, it's uh. It's a wonderful thing if you ask me. You know what I mean? I'm just like that is mad annoying. And if you don't know, I'm not gonna lie. If you don't know how to get out of it, you kind of deserve it. I'm just... <laughs> it still works. Like I, I hop on uh, showdown from time to time, uh-huh. and I, I just build a team with some Pokemon with Confuse Ray in the in the very beginning, uh-huh. um, and it still works. You know, it makes people gamble, and <laughs> I get some wins still. So. Yeah. Uh-huh. So, actually, I was kind of curious. Do you have a favorite Pokemon game of all time? Oh, um, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. So, I recently picked up an emulator. Okay. Um, I, I'm nuzlocking for the first time. I've oh, nice. Out. Okay. Yeah, it's pretty nuts. Uh, I'm, I'm nuzlocking yellow. Um, oh, okay. Nice. But uh, I picked up uh, Pokemon Crystal because my wife never played Gen 2, so I'm kind of like experiencing it with her. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, Gen two is my favorite, so Pokemon Gold, Silver, Crystal is probably my favorite. Nice. That's... But shout out, shout out to Black and White, also a really good. Uh huh. Yeah. That soundtrack too. Yeah. But I see you're right. <laughs> so the soundtrack's ridiculous. Um, yeah, I'm a huge fan of Gold and Silver myself. And if it's not Gold and Silver, it's Soul Silver and Heart and Gold. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know what yeah, I mean? Like. <laughs> You just I, I think I'm, talk, I'm pretty sure I've talked about this on the podcast before. You, you can go to two different regions in the game. Yeah. Come on. It's the only one. You get 16 badges. You, that's what I'm saying. What, what's not what, what you can't even argue against this. Like it's just yeah. it's, <laughs> it's the best. It's the best. It's, <laughs> there's so much game to that game. Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. Yeah, exactly. You think it's oh, as a as a child, you think it's over, but you sail overseas. Like I don't know, it's like a what ten second surf or whatever. You sail overseas, <laughs> and there's eight more badges waiting for you. You're like, yo, I got more game yeah. somehow. Don't, don't spoil, don't spoil the rest though, because my wife still has to see the rest of it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> we already made it. Already made it to Kanto, so she knows that. <laughs> okay, okay, good, good. Okay, no spoilers. <laughs> no. But yeah, Pokemon Smash. I'm a I'm a Nintendo fanboy, honestly. I'm a uh, Capcom fanboy and a Nintendo fanboy. Hmm. Okay. Classics. Fair enough. Fair enough. <sighs> I don't know what else you guys got. I, mean, I can talk about this all day. Hmm. Same. Honestly, Naj, What else do we have? So I mean, as far as gaming, last question for gaming before we get into the art. Uh, favorite game of all time, just hands down, the one that you'll always play. Uh, like my brain instantly says melee, but <laughs> but and, and then my brain is like, ah, oh, but Marvel 2. So, like that, those two games probably, uh, Marvel 2 and melee, yeah, right, completely, completely fair. I mean, we're still playing, yeah. people still playing Marvel 2 to this day, people yeah. still playing melee yeah. to this day. It's gonna be, it's hard for me to imagine. A world where we're not playing, or melee is not at least melee for sure. Marvel two for sure is gonna have their own little circle, right? And I'll tune in because it's entertaining. But with melee, um, it's it's so big right now. People are still talking about Summit, still talking about Mango Zane. You know, yeah. I mean the thing um, the thing about melee is that, um, you know, with no support from Nintendo, and I mm-hmm. we all still spite Nintendo to this day, the melee community. Thanks, yeah. Nintendo. Like right, corporate Nintendo is so stupid. They make terrible decisions, but mm-hmm. they made the best game of all time. So like. We we gotta give them that. So we're yeah. the the melee community has completely carried. I mean, they have some of the best production quality in all the FGC, right? Oh, um, so. some of the best commentators, like some of the best personalities in the in the top level scene. So mm-hmm. like it's all community driven, and that's what I like about it. And I think it can happen with any game, um, whether or not you have developer support. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, that's a melee is a great example of a game where the, you know, we always 
we always talk about that. We always, we always people always meme dead game, dead game, whatever. It can, yeah. It's not really not really a dead game, obviously. But melee is an example of a game where a community just you know so passionate about you know these group of these group of characters, you know this the mechanics of this particular game, and we're still still a hot to- still a hot topic on Twitter. We got circ, we you know we got Smash Summit. We got all these tournaments still, you know, we've got all these tournaments still throwing things for it. Yeah. And that just goes to show like, dude, if you really, really support whatever game it is, you keep it alive. Yeah. You know, so. Yeah. I really am excited for Ultimate uh, post pandemic because mm-hmm. the game only had a few months to grow before the pandemic happened. Right. Mm-hmm. And um, like, what, what was it like? I, maybe it was it a year. What, was the game out for a year? Yeah, it's about it's about a year. And I was just thinking about this too the other day. Yeah. Um, for at least for us, we haven't had a um, fully charged since uh, Spider Pass Two started. Uh, so oh, there's wow. a whole slew of characters that haven't you know we haven't seen any yeah. high level play from. Yeah, I'm so really, excited really excited to see. Yeah, I'm really excited to see what characters come out, what brackets are like, um, because I mean the last major before the pandemic was Genesis 7, I think. That was a while ago. Um, MKLeo won with, like, Ike or some, something something silly. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> and the game had not evolved uh, yet. And so I want to see the whole community come together again and have a major. And I want to mm-hmm. see who's the best player right now. Who really knows? It's probably Leo. It's probably mm-hmm. Leo. Mm-hmm. But but who really knows? Um, and, like, what, what characters are good? Who really knows? The game is still young. It's so young. And so I'm really, excited. I'm really excited for ultimate players to have the longevity and growth that we have in the melee scene already. I want to see yeah. it. It has potential. I mean, the cast is huge. I, yeah. it, there's, there's so much more to be explored. And I definitely see the potential. Yeah. You know what I mean? So um, I'm yeah. just as excited as you are. Uh, post-pandemic, you know, we'll see if... You know, we'll see who rises to the top, see what characters, you know, you know, come into uh, prominence. Um, the cool thing about MK Leo too is like a lot of times he would play these guys, he would play these characters that people uh, no one else was was doing stuff with. It'd be like, it's, you know, remember, remember when we pick up Joker and no, yeah. not a lot of people were talking about Joker before he was bodying people, and then yeah. they're like, yo, Joker's ridiculous. Like he's a, and then he plays Marth and he beats people in a tournament at Marth. Oh, Marth, what, what what's happening? Is this melee or right. like what? <laughs> I, I so, think maybe, I think most of the um, Smash community now recognizes that for for Leo it was never about the character. Like Leo literally just picks a character with a sword and then wins. Like it doesn't really matter which <laughs> game he is. Um, he's been doing that since Brawl. Uh, uh-huh. And I mean, he I think the way he plays, uh, when, from when I watch him, the way I describe it, like he plays correctly. I I don't really uh-huh. see that in any other player. Like he he, uh-huh. he has really good footsies. Um, like even when he is a bit goes for a bit of aggression, his mix up really strong. He's very well rounded, um, and the fact that he does play swords characters means his style is usually the same thing. Like he's just spacing attacks. He's uh you know looking for certain things, going going for good confirms. Like he's very very standard play style. Um, mm-hmm. Not really anything spectacular about it, but the result is that he makes so many good decisions that it ends up being very spectacular. Um, and I think he does that better than any other player. Would textbook be a good term? Yeah, yeah, that's, way, that's textbook, a good way to right? describe it too. Yeah, mm-hmm. I agree. Yeah, like if you if you watch him in so many different situations, yeah, um, he probably has labbed it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah exactly. Seriously, like that's so crazy to me. But there are people that work that hard, and I am one hundred percent on the same uh, same train yeah. as you are. Like, dude, it's just it's just clean. Like that's yeah. what wins. So yeah, yeah that's that's too much work to win. <laughs> it is. It is too much fun. That's why you got to yeah. choose having fun. You got to have fun instead. No, I'm, I'm having fun, man. <laughs> I give. I give up. No, yeah. I'm done. <laughs> if I'm in a tournament and this guy labbed out some niche uh, situation that I've never seen, and he knows exactly what to do, he he can win. Yeah, I'm having fun. <laughs> you know, I'm having fun at that point. Like, <laughs> oh, I, I love I love seeing that stuff. I love seeing optimization. Um, um, I'm I'm of the opinion that it's always the scientists that win in the end. Um, uh huh. Like, like there's in there's two parts of the brain. Like there's intuition, and usually mm-hmm. early on in the game when a game comes out, like Potemkin, right, in the new Guilty Gear. Mm-hmm. Early on in the game, it's reads, it's intuition, it's um, it's having a feel for the game, but 
ultimately in the long run that's kind of human nature that it, it doesn't really mean anything um until you start labbing and mm -hmm. usually the, the best players if, if you leave a game alone just let them lab um the best mm -hmm. players are going to be the ones who are just know everything about every situation that they're in they're prepared mm -hmm. the player who wins is the player that's most prepared mm -hmm. um, and that always goes to the scientists right right right. that's why yeah, um right. i think uh i don't really see infiltration anymore but he uh -huh. was one of those players back then i know he got like canceled for a little while and then he got uh -huh. canceled but right. uh, i really like infiltration because he was one of those players he was just a scientist like they would interview him like how do you get so good he's like training mode I'm like well <laughs> interesting well i mean <laughs> not a wrong answer not even a little bit so yeah, yeah. he was you know playing his akuma was clean him playing hakan was you know he, oh, yeah. he he had those he got those yeah so hmm. but yeah you just you know optimize you know got to optimize got to lab scenarios uh you got to you got to work a lot harder than you know a lot of people a lot of these guys need to hear that you just got to work a lot harder than you think you should be you know what i mean oh yeah, yeah. i mean the bet like this is how it is. Like the best players, are usually the hardest worker. They usually mm -hmm. deserve it. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So yeah, guilty gear. Uh, same thing. You know, like you were saying with Potemkin. Um. So yeah, you just work hard. Either that, or you play soul, right? <laughs> 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 I mean, uh, he's gonna damage. <laughs> I mean, I mean, guilty gear. Like, like I said, with the young games, everyone there's gonna be your crybabies. Everyone's gonna complain about everything. But uh -huh. to me, it's like if everyone's complaining about a character, I'm just, I'm gonna I want to pick that character, uh -huh. I pick the character that everyone's complaining about because there's uh -huh. obviously something good about them. Right, right, and right. And right. let the game evolve for like a couple of years. Is that character still gonna be good? Maybe, probably. Uh -huh. And uh -huh. it's just gonna it's, it's it should be the norm. Like the broken thing, the thing that people complain about. If you're a competitive player, if you want to win, that that is the norm. That is your base level. You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so if um, just real quick, just literally one thing on Guilty Gear, like with, um, I don't know if you guys have seen Soul in the hours I've been playing the game, but I actually don't want to see him nerf that much. What I really want to see is there could be, a, you know, maybe a slight adjustment maybe here and there, but what I really want to see is everyone to be just as broken as he is. And from <laughs> my experience, and I actually played the game, so I swear, I swear, I actually played the game, and I actually hate all the characters playing against all the characters, and I think that's a good thing. Like, yeah. I really do. Like, just everyone's just dumb in their own way. Soul just happens to be the one that sticks out, but the game, like you said, right? It's in it's that game is in its in, like Ultimate's young, and then you have Guilty Gear literally in its infancy yeah. stage, right? So um, I'm excited to see you know what else is gonna come out of uh, of this. So yeah, like, gotta let it develop. Yeah, I I like that balance philosophy that games have now. Um, someone mm -hmm. put it really nicely when it, uh, describing Smash Ultimate. Every character is the best character at a certain thing. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I think that's a really good way to put it. And it, that I think that's the best way to balance these games. Um, some people call it power creep, you know, because nerfs don't feel good. No matter what character you play, what game you play. Um, uh -huh. it, it, it's going to make you want to stop playing that character a lot of the time if, if the character gets nerfed. Rather, mm -hmm. if you buff weak characters to, to balance them out with the broken stuff, and that, that weak character previously has has something that's kind of broken now, it, you kind of start creating this balancing act like, oh, uh, that could be something with potential. Um, mm -hmm. Rather than, oh, my character's weak now, I I, I miss the, the old version, you know? Uh -huh. uh, so th it's that way in like, in most games now, like League of Legends, uh, Pokemon even, like it, even though some of the weak Pokemon, like Raticate is the best at something, you know? It gets Super Fang. It's the only Pokemon that gets Super Fang. Actually, that's mm -hmm. not true, but it learns Super Fang. Like, that's something that it does well. Yeah. So it, it's know. good to have that individuality within your characters. Because ultimately, we play these games for self-expression. We want to, we want to, we, like, we pick these characters because something in our personality resonates with them. And mm -hmm. like I said, I was saying earlier, like, you want to pick the best character. But, you know, when you first get into a game, you, you want to pick something, like, you vibe with. You know, right, right, right. So right. There's always that transition from intuition to science, and mm -hmm. I think as a gamer, that's really important because you're gonna enjoy a game intuitively, and you're gonna be making decisions intuitively. But as you continue playing, you're gonna become more of a scientist. You're gonna start thinking, what do I do here? What do I do there? I'm gonna test that out, etc. So, mm -hmm. oh, what was I gonna say? Oh, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, eventually, some characters gotta be the best at losing. And the best of yeah. making everybody else that's look true. good. Facts. Facts. Yeah, that's this true. is facts. <laughs> it's absolutely true. 
like DK, his specialty is making everybody's combos look great. Okay, let, let's not <laughs> let's let's not let's not uh, be a little too truthful out here, please. So the, <laughs> all I hear, all I feel is pain. <laughs> you play DK? I do, I do play, I do play DK. I, I, that's absolutely true. Um, I mean, yeah, it, it still applies <laughs> to him, right? He he's still. I mean, maybe not losing, but he still is the best at certain things, like up throw up air, right? Like he probably has the best one in the game. Oh, um, classic, yeah. And his uh, his F tilt is also really good. In my opinion, mm-hmm. one of the best forward tilts in the game. Like, mm-hmm. there's each character has, they just have a thing. Yeah. And that's yeah. Basically. Yeah. Like so, when and it comes then, to meaties, you got to watch out for DK. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, ultimately, though, uh, yeah, basically, like what you said, it's just something something with the character needs to resonate with you. And I just, dude, I just keep coming back because I just have fun with the, with the character. You know what I mean? I am choosing to play this guy you know yeah i like to meme about you know being combo fighter this or that or whatever and yeah it's 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 pain but it's a, like joking manner you know what i mean I, I really he really just resonates with me you know what i mean and i think a lot of people you know just you gotta find that character and they might be the best character in the game or they might not be but this is just what i i like doing so mm-hmm. so andre what resonated with you to get you into art with art, oh, oh the transition, yeah, oh, yeah. The, the, that's the transition <laughs> king at work. That you, done. you see it here firsthand. <laughs> yeah, we, you, now. Yo, it was the <laughs> hand experience. No, yeah, honestly, it's not that different from gaming. Uh, I mean, uh-huh. I was like three years old. I don't even remember, honestly. Three, four years old, I just started mm-hmm. taking pencil and drawing. Um, like it's very interesting because, again, like everything I'm talking about, I've thought about a lot, and. Mm-hmm. I've learned that when you're a kid, you kind of fall in love with whatever is in front of you mm-hmm. all the time. Like if your parents will put, if my parents put a tennis racket in front of me and gave me a tennis ball, I'll probably be ten, a tennis player, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, so they gave me paper and they gave me a Game Boy. So I, I would just do whatever they gave me and find find something entertaining to do with it. Um, I think as a kid, um, not all kids, but a lot of kids really, uh, kind of see cartoons and it's because the drawings and the shapes are so simple it's easy to understand um and you copy it and it's like oh i you know i can draw this face and this character it's it's very similar to gaming in that you can resonate with a character it's actually really really similar in that regard like when i saw goku for the first time i was like oh snap this guy's sick you know yeah um so for me it was always character driven um, I would always draw. I, I think my first characters that I would draw are, were the Ninja Turtles. Oh, super mm-hmm. sick! I love those guys. Um, still popular now too. And um, I was into that for a long time. And then when I was like six or seven years old, I started getting into anime like Pokemon and DBZ and stuff. Um, so I was always drawing, you know. And what's interesting is that I don't think I was like particularly talented at it. But sometimes when your family or your classmates are telling you, oh, you're so good at it, it kind of puts something in your head like, oh, maybe I am, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And I personally, I'm of the opinion that I think anyone can draw. And this is uh, coming from, I mean, I just started last week as an art teacher and I teach kids. Mm -hmm. And um, the ones that are doing well, they usually have a lot of confidence and they kind of have a lot of flow. Like they get into the, they kind of get in the zone when they're drawing. Um, and it's, I don't think they're particularly great at drawing because they're little kids, but they have that, they have that, uh, like that vibe about them. Like I want to draw and I want to do it well. Um, and the kids that don't do well are usually kind of in their heads already. They're kind of like, I don't feel like doing this. Um, like I want to be somewhere else, or I don't think I'm good at this. That's like a terrible thought to have, uh, you know, if you're a kid, um, like you don't want to be thinking, I I suck at (laughs) <laughs> oh yeah th- for sure yeah you pretty well. yeah so um yeah when I was a kid I don't think I was particularly great at drawing but because my family and my friends were telling me hey you're good at it it made me want to keep going um and so I just kept drawing until like high school and then um I knew when I was like 12 or 13 I already knew I wanted to get into like movies or something yeah um but I didn't know I wanted to do animation until I was like 18, 18 or 19. Um, so like as a kid, yeah, I just, I was just drawing, but what made me want to go into it like professionally was uh, actually the movie WALL-E, the Pixar movie. Really? Uh, Great I movie. Saw it, 
yeah, I, I saw it and I was like, this is beautiful. Um, I, I just felt this moment in the movie. And Pixar's really good at that. The Pixar's really good at creating moments. Um, and there was a moment I felt in the movie where I was like, this is just gorgeous. This is beautiful storytelling. And um, I wanted to bring that feeling to people. Uh, I wanted to be able to create moments for people. Um, it's interesting because like, if you think about it, like fiction and animation, I, I don't know if this word is a stretch, but it's, it's kind of a lie, you know? It's mm -hmm. kind of, because it's not real. I'm not right. saying, a lie is a strong word, but it's kind of what it is. It's like, you're seeing, you know, if it's a cartoon, lines and colors on a page, mm -hmm. uh, on, a, on a piece of paper. Uh, if it's a 3D movie, you're seeing 3D models being rendered and moving around. Why does it mean something? You know, why does it like kind of take us into the character? Why did why do why are we able to live vicariously through those characters? Yeah. And mm -hmm. I was like, I really wanted to explore that. Um, and so I really like got into like reading more manga and kind of trying to practice more animation and stuff like that. But ultimately, that's what I want. I want to be able to take people in, into a character and feel what they're feeling and really feel a moment. Um, mm -hmm. So that, that's like my story pretty much from be, uh, from beginning to now. Wow. I really like that that take as art or fiction as a lie. I've never, never heard that, but it makes so much sense when you think about it. <laughs> yeah. I think when it's executed or just when any, anything just artistic wise is just executed, you know, very, very well, you know, it's just the fact that I can, you know, interpret it and then it just turns into this whole you know whole thing and i can kind of just tell it, it it just tells a story to me mm -hmm. you know what i mean that's that's just fascinating to me you know what i mean that you yeah. know that I, I could definitely see how you'd be like like oh wow wow like there's a lot to there's a lot to say here when you're just and you're just looking at something right yeah right, so mm -hmm. so uh you want to plug your social medias real quick oh sure <laughs> yeah. are we like winding down or something uh, <laughs> no we'll, we'll do it twice but just you know oh now yeah everybody I'm, listening well, so, in wants to see some art um i'm i'm choke nader on everything so er at the end not or some people spell it with or mm -hmm. so c-h-o-k-n-a-t-e-r i'm on uh, twitch mostly but um i post my art on twitter and instagram a lot of times i just tweet random venting which is kind of what twitter is for yeah but um instagram for sure choke nader uh but you, I don't post everything on Instagram because honestly, I find social media tedious and it doesn't really help me market myself that much. Mm -hmm. um, mostly, you'll be able to see everything on my stream. I do everything on my stream. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So no deviant, art, no deviant art account? Dude, uh, deviant art makes me sad. Okay, so <laughs> deviant art used to be the place to be for artists. Now it's completely degenerate. Like. Like if you think about like Tumblr and furries and and mm -hmm. uh, weird fetishes, mm -hmm. information, you know, weird stuff. That's mm -hmm. kind of what DeviantArt is now. So um, be, so is it less about so it's less about the art? No, I, I think I mean there's okay. some artists on there, but like uh -huh. the, the type of art that's popular in DeviantArt has really changed over the years. <gasps> okay, okay. You know I'm I'm, 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 yeah, I okay, I got it. I can yeah. see that. Mm-hmm. It makes me sad because I'm sure there's a bunch of great artists on DeviantArt. But like, I feel like a lot of the pros, like the concept artists, the really, they, I think a lot of the concept artists moved to ArtStation. Okay. And a lot of the animators moved onto like Discord and Twitter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Twitter's okay. like the place to be now for art. You know what app is really slept on? I mean, you can't, it's not really a social media platform, but Pinterest is amazing if you want to see cool art. Oh, okay. Oh, I got to check it out. Dude, I, I always tell guy my guy friends, like the women be on Pinterest for a long time, but we have been sleeping. Pinterest is insane. <laughs> is you that the, is, thick art? Pinterest is a place to be. Is that the move? Am I gonna have to download that? I personally oh, have. Yeah. To, I've never had an issue with that app because whatsoever. It's just no, something I just never have delved into. That's it. No. Like I just I'm unaware. A hundred percent download it. A hundred percent. Like check it out. Like look mm -hmm. for like anime art or something. Look, even like, even just type in animation um, in the in the uh, in the search bar, you're gonna see some sick stuff. Yeah. You don't gotta you don't gotta tell me twice. I got my phone right <laughs> here, dude. Yeah, interesting. <laughs> tell, me, <laughs> tell me, I'm become curious. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Up here.
Top so tier, Pinterest like, site. No social interactions though, right? It's just- No, yeah, it, it's it. more like um, it uses algorithms to like find art that's similar to your tastes. Okay. So mm -hmm. that's why a lot of women are on there like, oh, I want this for my wedding. Oh, I really like these earrings, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But for me, I look for anime art on it and it, it, the algorithms is still really good. Like if I, if I like something or pin something that is close to my tastes, it'll lead me to a lot of other stuff that's really close to what I like. Oh, I really want to check it out now. <laughs> huh. So over the years and, you know, as, as you've been doing art, did you ever have a favorite piece or a favorite commission that you did? Um, wow. Uh, hmm. I don't know. I, <laughs> honestly, I like the ones where people pay me well. <laughs> Yo, let's go, dude. That no, you know what, you know what top tier is? That. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that is top tier. Yeah. Like the thing is, like being a freelance, um, a lot of times you don't really get work that you enjoy. Right. Um, so if it's like a simple portrait, like can you draw me an anime style? I love that. If they say, Oh, I'm giving you creative freedom, you can kind of draw it how you want to. I love that. Mm -hmm. um, so any one of those, if people just be like, hey, can you draw this? I trust you. I, 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 I trust your style. I really like whatever you do. Um, and, and, then they, and, they, and they pay me well. That's fine. But it's the mm -hmm. ones where like, not only do maybe, maybe they don't pay me that well, because um, I set the price, right? But at the same time, they could be asking for really specific things. Like you give them a draft, you give them some revisions. And they'd be like, oh, I don't really like this. At, at some point, I had to learn, like, I have to limit the number of revisions and I can do. I have to limit the number of drafts I can do before I start charging more, stuff like that. Like it, right. it's really um, uh, like being a professional uh, as opposed to being a hobbyist artist or an amateur is knowing how to price yourself and knowing how to manage your time. And that's really okay. just like any business, really. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's being able to, you know, live off your art and um, treating it mm -hmm. like a business. And so a lot of it is just like calculating time and money. Um, mm -hmm. So as far as the enjoyment of it, it's usually just the ones where they let me just draw. They let me just be free. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I don't yeah. really have any particular favorites mm -hmm. or just like as far as freelancing commissions, it's the ones where I get to have fun. That's actually good. That's actually really nice to know. You know what I mean? I mean, what this is, that's what you're comfortable doing, right? If someone's yeah. just like, hey, go nuts. And then you could really just do what you do best yes and yes. you know and obviously if you want something you know especially from someone you know and it's creative related right such as art yeah. right you'd want them to do their best work and you know what else is better than what they know best you know what i mean and, yeah. and you know, who knows maybe they'll do it in a way you never thought could be could look aesthetic to them or look cool to them and uh, you yeah. might love it so yeah it's actually nice to know like i'll keep that in mind if i ever you know what i mean no yeah i'm down i'm down mm -hmm. um i want to briefly mention um as an artist there are some routes that i could not go down i don't okay. know if you guys catch my drift but yeah <laughs> yes <laughs> I, yes I, I i do uh, i i spend a lot of time it's on funny. internet i think well, i think it's safe to say all of us do <laughs> well, it's funny because um I couldn't sell out. You know, I'm a religious guy. Like, you know, uh -huh. I try to keep my morals. But uh -huh. uh, several people have, like, tempted me, like, hey, you know, I'll pay you this much if you draw this. Uh huh. I'm going to be honest. I did it once. Uh huh. I did it once a long time ago. Mm -hmm. And it didn't feel right. Dude paid me $100 right, right. First, draw something. Uh huh. Something unmentionable. And I was like, all right, I did it. And then, uh, and then uh, I couldn't do it after that. And I was like, mm -hmm. it's funny because I know that route is like extremely profitable, but it's like, as an artist, I have to keep my integrity. And also that thing, kind of thing doesn't scale well. Like it might be able to give you a lot of immediate money, but like you can't get, you can't become the next Walt Disney or whatever doing that. So yeah. There's a new cancel culture today. <laughs> oh yeah, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I mean, it, it depends <laughs> on if you lean into it, right? Like even if uh -huh. you, some people don't care about getting canceled because that's what they love doing, you know? Right, right, right. Yeah. I, you know, um, I I think that's important. Actually, I mean, I, it's it's funny that I have to say that, but it's just I think it's more than fair to if you if this is something you're not comfortable doing and it just feels like, you know, it, it's just you got to keep your integrity. I think that's yeah. that's more than okay. I feel the same way. Just work. that's not even I'm not even an artsy person at all. I'm I'm talking about in general. You know what I mean? Like just but, but I I just would choose to not 
betray my you know integrity or like this is yeah. just what i want to this is what i want to do you know what i mean like yes it makes a buck and you know what i want to be honest too i actually don't i'm not gonna you know fault people for hey if you're trying to make a buck and this is what gets yeah. it cool you know but if it's just something you legit like yo i just cannot and even if you just you, you did it once and then you're just, oh wow that's not for me then yeah. that's more than okay like that that's yeah perfectly fine you know so i mean i still get tempted now because i'm like dude people people are offering crazy amounts for like yeah right that's that's fair yeah the the reason i brought that up is because i have done some stuff uh not not safe for work it's still safe for work but uh like furries i've gotten a Uh number of people asking me for furries there was actually one point where i was doing like five different commissions either Uh furries or some kind of animal or someone's pet and I was just uh-huh. like, man, I, I, I was not really enjoying that time. Mm-hmm. Um, but I mean, they were, they were, they were paying and I was like, okay, I'll do it. Um, I, I don't mind doing pets. Like a lot of people ask me for pets, like pets uh-huh. pets all the time. Um, right. But yeah. There was a time period where it was just straight up furries. Um, uh-huh. Like, dude, I can't believe I'm doing this. I was like on stream. My whole Twitch chat was making fun of me. Like, Joe, you're a furry, you're a furry. And I was like, oh, no. it was on, sh- <laughs> it's on stream too. Okay. Yeah. I was, yeah. That's interesting. Mm-hmm. I do all my work on stream. Okay. Oh, okay. That's yeah. okay. So my stream is, I'm not really trying to entertain people that much. It's kind of like a hangout stream while I'm working, you know? Okay. Yeah. yeah. You know, so no, yeah, seriously. I actually, I'm like, I mean, you know, you have a choice here and if you're, you know, if you're choosing to, Hey, I just, this is just not my thing. It's not, but you know, that's more than okay. And if you're choosing the buck, then why not at the same time? Why not? Yeah. You know I mean? I'm yeah. a firm believer in that one too. It's just like, dude, yeah. like, if this is you know you want to do this go ahead so yeah right you know feel you that feel you on that one yeah uh so i mean we we commissioned you once for the the cards and i really enjoyed those like oh yeah that's right those are amazing (laughs) oh wait wait oh the oh oh let's go i did not know that yeah i forgot that that was you guys yeah mwg what does that stand for again uh molly wap gang Molly Wap Gang. Oh, Molly yeah. Wap Gang. I would never would have guessed that. It's okay. Me neither. Nobody <laughs> knows. <laughs> In fact, this is the first time I've publicly said oh, Molly yeah, Wap <laughs> yeah, that, that, yeah, exactly. Right? The acronym is there and people would just do, yeah, MWG, right? And no, it's sure. funny. I, not yeah. a lot of people ask what it stands for. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> like when you see it, you assume that the G is gaming and MW just means something, you know. It's it was gaming or something. That's what I would assume, you know. But okay. Uh, we're the Molly Wop gang. That's when we have gang. the, uh, what's it called? The knuckle dust. <laughs> yeah. Can I be MWG choke meter? Sure. MWG. I'll just, <laughs> yeah, why not? Even if I don't have a previous affiliation with you guys, I'm just going to put it in front of my name, okay? I'm just going to put it in front of my Why not? Uh, we're the <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but, hey Chognator, i gotta ask you something i don't know i have no clue if this is art related or not it may or may not be but i just had to ask i i have met you in person once right and oh, this was that i don't even think you remember this but this was at metro this is at metro Sma- like smash at metro or whatever a long time ago oh, and like wow. maybe t- yeah 2014 maybe 2013 14 playing right. project m I was playing, but I just, I was just having fun with Project M, but I was there for Melee, oh. right? And I, I, I met you, I think you were doing commentator and you were doing yeah. commentating and then you were, I actually saw you play Ice Climbers and you're probably messing around with probably Spaces or something like that. Yeah. But I had to ask you, this is so random, but like, I remember I, uh, I met you and you were very nice to me. And then I was wearing a Paramore shirt that day and you asked me to take a picture. And I thought that was random, oh, just really? of, the, uh, of the shirt. Yeah, is that are, so? Oh. Do you? I know it was a long time ago. You probably don't remember, but do you have any idea why you 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 would ask that? I like Paramore, <laughs> dude. Th- that's all I need to know. That's the best. Yeah. That's the best reason. Because that was fast. I love Paramore too, but that was just fascinating to me because I, I didn't meet you once, and you asked for that, and that kind of like, whoa, maybe this dude just really likes Paramore too. So I was like, yeah, dude, yeah. go ahead, take the picture. Yeah, I'm, I'm down with Paramore. It's kind of like a guilty pleasure because kind of weird. Yeah. I like, uh-huh. you know, tell people, oh yeah, I like them, right. but they're they're a solid band. I don't listen to them mm-hmm. that much anymore, but I mean, they make they made good songs. Same, I absolutely agree with you. The only difference is uh, I just openly tell people like that's one of the <laughs> like I was like yeah, this is not slightly <laughs> record. So no, I just wanted to know that was a random question, but I'm just glad that I I know now. Like I yeah. same, I feel the same way. That's funny because you bring up you know, memory. The, I don't remember. I mean, uh-huh. I've been in a lot of tournaments and like met a lot of people that just kind of acquaintances. Mm-hmm. It's surprising that there's a lot of people that knew me 
Um, I mean, I think in like 2015, 2016, um, I went to a ton of tournaments because uh, uh -huh. I had a couple of different sponsors and Battleground Games and Modesto sponsored me. That was probably the best time period for me as a Smash player. Um, but I was like kind of popular at that point. It was kind of freaky. I know mm -hmm. there's probably esports pros that get that all the time. Like, oh, mm -hmm. hey, Mango. Hey, what's up, man? Mm -hmm. but, like there were a couple times when i was playing smash in 2016 where i was working i was working at a deli mm -hmm. in modesto and some guy um came in he's like hey you're that smash guy huh my son always tells me about you he, oh he, where he, oh, okay yeah. and i was like oh snap okay um, <laughs> and then there was also another time i was sitting i was in line at in and out and some little kid like 12 year old kid approached me and he's like hey are you choke meter and i was freaking out i was like what how does this kid know who I am? <laughs> that is wild i yeah. like that i had a little celebrity moment in those days mm -hmm. it's kind of funny um That's that was yeah i just i don't know why i wanted to mention that but it was like yeah because it's just because i ran in, ran into a lot of people uh-huh yeah. yeah it's it's funny like some people will just remember random stuff or like yeah. you really just make an impact and maybe not the, the the biggest impact in their life but just make some kind of impact and like they just remember you so it's just funny. It's funny thing about that. Yeah. I'm hmm. considered like the grandpa of the 209 smash scene. <laughs> like not even dad, daddy, you know, I'm like the first Hokage of the, of the 209. <laughs> first, okay. Yeah, okay I like that. <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, basically the first Hokage is dead, you know, like I'm, I'm all retired. I barely go to anything anymore. But me, and maybe even the TOs now don't, maybe they don't know who I am. But the TO that came before them knew that I was TOing for those TOs, you know? So, like, yeah. it, it, I'm just, like, literally the first Hokage. Like, but it's the first like, three or four generations now of, like, TOs and, and players. But, but the first Hokage was godlike, though. Yeah, people <laughs> yeah. know that. People know that one. He was ridiculous. Everyone's like... <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. I can't believe they turned us into grandpas as soon as we turned 30. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's... Yeah, that's crazy. That old? We're not oh. that old. It's not that sad. But in esports, oh, I no, guess it is. I don't know. Yeah. It's more yeah. about like more years. about when you came into the scene, right? Like, uh huh. Yeah. That's why they consider me grandpa because I'm like I came into the scene so long ago, so I have all these stories from like 2004, 2005. Uh -huh. and they're like, oh my god, that sounds so long ago. Like, you know, we didn't have net play, like we uh -huh. you know, stuff like that. Right, right, right. We didn't have YouTube. You know? Oh, yeah. oh no, 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 no. We did not. <laughs> did, nope. Not a thing. Man. Holy crap. <laughs> the pre-YouTube days. <laughs> I learned the hard way. I, I, they, they, way yeah. I, I got hit with it. That's how I learned. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You go to the tournament, I was like, oh, I've never seen that in my life. <laughs> you try to go home and lab it and then you come back to another tournament. They've already they've already developed counterplay. So <laughs> it's great. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh. Yeah, I think the reason, I mean, the reason I'm a grandpa now. Because mm -hmm. everything's so accelerated now, they have all the resources. Oh yeah, esports is very well established. This players come and go really fast, and they learn really fast, and they get good really fast. Everything's accelerated. I agree. It really you is. Said it's just you said a lot of that groundwork for uh, two hundred nine. Yeah. Hey man, you know, <sighs> lots more games to be played. New generation. Yeah, I'm excited. I mean, me too. Um. It, it's not, there was a time where I was going to those games at Battleground and Modesto, um, a lot of tournaments, several tournaments a week, and I was very proud to look at it because I'll, it it almost felt like they were my kids, you know, like mm. it's kind of weird to say, or or at least like younger brothers. It actually yeah. felt more like kids than younger brothers because uh -huh. because I was like, you know, I I brought this to life, yeah. and I guess I want to briefly talk about like how that came to be, okay, mm -hmm. because. It was in 2015 or 20, no, 2014, around 2014, where I was really focused on being a competitor and I was always getting second place, no matter where I went. And it really sucked. I don't know if you guys know, but second place is the worst feeling <laughs> in the SEC. <laughs> Third place, fine. Fourth place, fine. Ninth, that's fine. Last place, that's fine. But second place is absolutely the worst feeling. Yeah. um because it's like you're so close getting into grand finals people cheering for you or cheering against you and then you lose it really hurts um so i would travel to fresno get second travel to sacramento get second every single time it's like a two-hour drive from modesto i was like the only good player in my region for a time um 
And I was like, I don't have a scene that I can play with. It was always either Fresno or SAC. I would have to go there. Or I would go to the Bay Area and get body, you know, get fifth place, sixth, seventh place, whatever, because the Bay Area is stronger. Yeah. Um, and there was just that time period where I was like, I really, really hate getting second. And I realized, like, I don't know if you guys, you guys know Filipino champ? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think he's like canceled or something now. Who really knows? But mm. <laughs> yeah, but uh, he won um, Evo 2012. Yeah. And he it, the reason he won is because he had all the top players over at his house all the time because he had FGTV Live, his Twitch channel, and the whole house was like dedicated to streaming Marvel. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's why he won because he had constantly good competition. And he said it himself, you're only as good as who you play with. Um, mm, facts. That's when I, yeah that's when i realized you know what i need a scene here i if if i don't have a scene here i can't just keep getting second place in another region which barely paid for my gas you know like i i needed to get better and i needed to do it at home and so i like it, at that pe- time period i i even think melee was kind of dead at that point but people mm-hmm. were playing, playing project m so i set up uh, a project m tournament here in manteca um and got people to play and like 40 people came out and people i guess there were people in the region that were just looking and waiting for something to happen and that's usually the case there's usually a ton of people in the scene that are just waiting and looking i want to play this game competitively and i just waiting for a tournament to come up and mm-hmm. when you decide to all of a sudden as a to you're gonna and you guys could probably relate you're gonna meet all kinds of people that you never you didn't even know that they they would see it some people <laughs> see it like um like some people would say oh i saw this in reddit i didn't even post it on reddit you know like mm-hmm. just, it's just shared everywhere um, and it's all networked. And um, uh-huh. at that po- time period, I was really trying to grow the scene. Um, I would invite people to my house, just like free Smash Fest. Don't really have a tournament because I, you know, I don't want to. There, there was like a sad story where there was this guy named Robert and uh, mm-hmm. and he wanted to start the, the PM scene in Manteca with me. And I was playing casuals with him and I knew he was new. So I was kind of going easy on him, but I was still constantly like two stocking him. Right. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I I was taking it easy because I'm like okay I don't want to really go hard on this guy because I don't want to beat him out of the you know into thinking he sucks right Uh uh-huh um some people are like that some people think that if if I keep losing I just suck and I should just quit right um what the sad part is that like a couple months later because I was giving him some advice on how to get better he got better right but we I went back to his house and we started playing casuals more casuals and I'm like oh this guy's better so I went a little bit harder on him right so Uh I started trying harder and I was still consistently two stocking him, but mm-hmm. because the difference in skill was the same, um, well, he thought it was the same. It rather I was just going easy on him before, right, right. Um, he thought he didn't get better, so I was oh. like, and he quit after that, and I was like, oh, oh. I don't want that to happen, right? Uh huh. I that really sucks because I he was like he wanted to start the scene with me, and I was like, dude, I'm down. But it's. Uh, <laughs> at the end of the day there's going to be players like that who come and go all the time they're going to get bodied and quit but i want people to have fun so i you know i would have like no pressure just play casuals at my house let's just get uh-huh. together. let's just have fun with the game and people enjoy the free events and there and then when you have the free events um just hanging out and playing you get you start seeing those people oh they want to be competitive and then you have the tournaments um and so it, it grew and grew from there it started out with like literally one or two people come to my house for pm sometimes for melee and then the more that happened, the more I tried to put it on Facebook. I created the Facebook group, Central Valley Smash. It started out with like five people. Now there's like a, a thousand people or something. Um, and Whoa. like, uh, I don't know, it just, it just, it starts with, with a seed, you know, you just start, mm-hmm. you just start it. And then the scene grows and grows and grows. Mm-hmm. And I know that now the scene is well established. Um, and there was a scene before 2014 too, but that kind of died somehow. I think, and I, I guess, I, I, not a lot of people were running stuff when I left because I left for school um, in like 2010 yeah. and up until 2012 and then I moved back home and the scene was like gone and that's when I was like you know trying to go to tournaments and always getting seconds so that that's kind of the timeline where I, I, I there just came a point where like I need a scene to get better I need a local scene um, and I had to build a local scene and suddenly it took a long time um, but are you guys familiar with Spark the Sheik player Melee player oh yeah yeah. yeah. So he he is now. Um, I mean, he's in Pakistan now with his family. But um, mm-hmm. it took him a long time to become the best player. And I, I was so happy that I finally found a player from my own region, from the t- from the tournaments that I TO'd, um, that was starting to surpass me. Like mm-hmm. you know, I I felt that almost like a father son like mentorship scenario. 
I know he mm-hmm. trained it all on his own, and he doesn't even play the same character as me. He plays Sheik. But mm-hmm. I was literally playing him like two to three tournaments a week. It was like a golden age where we had a ton of weeklies. Yeah. And we would play several sets in Melee, PM, and Smash 4. And it was pretty funny because there was a time where he and I were in grand finals in three different tournaments, PM, mm-hmm. Melee, and Smash 4. And we would just constantly play each other. And what's crazy about him is that, you know, I made Ice Slimer. So he was getting wobbled every single set. Like just uh-huh. wobbled over and over, coming home and telling his mom that he got second place again to the ice climber guy, right? Uh-huh. Yeah. And um, I'm so proud of him because that kind of put him through. Uh, it it gave him the mindset. He he. I mean, I think he already kind of had the mindset, but it it kind of like beat it into him, like lose, 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 and figure it out. Lose, lose, lose. Go home, figure it out. And he kept coming back, and he started having competitive sets with me, and finally beat me. And I was. It was this very like like beautiful almost bittersweet situation where i'm like i i'm i can pass the torch in a way yeah that, that's what i felt because i was already at that that was like 2015 i was already like ah oh, you know i need to focus on like getting my life together starting an art career mm-hmm. you know, focusing on my relationships stuff like that like mm-hmm. and i was like i i it, it, it allowed me to let go knowing he was better than me now mm-hmm. like the first player, not not the first player, but a new player in the two and nine that can be successful at tournaments, and, awesome. and I don't have to like do it myself. And it felt I was very proud that it wasn't me trying to get good and compete, but rather trying to build something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that, that's the that's my story of like two and nine's bad. Nice. Yeah. So it, so he's the the third Hokage or the second <laughs> Hokage? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I, he's still he's he's still he's still bodying people yeah, so yeah. to this day he's so. probably still the hokage yeah yeah he probably <laughs> i agree with you um yeah a very heartwarming story it's crazy how much you know video games can impact impact your life you know just mm-hmm. you know it tends to branch off maybe you do something else that's not video game related or it just helps you in a way or you know if you get this feeling of accomplishment doing this for someone else or doing it for yourself whatever it is mm-hmm. right it's um you know very heartwarming to hear something like that and 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 sparks no joke dude he's sick i'm actually you know it's it's amazing seeing someone you know that was from here this region yeah i mean and now he's you know on the um what is that the pgr or like on the rankings and he's he's just tearing it up or something yeah he's really yeah he's he's really sick you watch him and you know just you're you know at one point he was getting wobble and now (laughs) yeah he did now and then now now, like people like yo that's that's spark that's a chic player you know you you know when he's chain grabbing you you might as well be getting wobbled which is so so (laughs) so you know so yeah yeah yeah, great (laughs) great story shout out to to, shout out to spark man great play spark yeah i love that yeah all right. Yeah. So, uh, Andre, one last question before we head out. Uh-huh. You keep mentioning Naruto. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what about One Piece? Uh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> no. Okay, okay, okay. I don't know if yeah, I got another two hours. <laughs> I, like this, I like this question, though. This is a great question. <laughs> Yo. Yeah, One Piece, is, One Piece is simply the best. Um, yes. Oh, it's the best. Okay, I was. Oh sorry. yeah, one piece the best. I, you know, I talk about Naruto, but it's just uh-huh. that Naruto is easy to make. Uh, it's easy to make the Hokage references. Uh, yeah. Me- yeah, metaphor. Yeah. Uh, one piece. Oh, not the four Yonko pen. Yeah, one, one piece is the best. <laughs> like, dude. Yeah, I can talk about this all day. I don't know how much time more time you guys. Well, we definitely don't have time. <laughs> you, you, can, you can put in a whole another hour long section of you know, what got you into One Piece. What's your story with One Piece? It's so crazy. I love One Piece. It's the best. That's yeah. all I can say. I, I got into it. It uh, is the best. Yeah. I started reading it's... the manga and I just got hooked. So, wait, wait, hold on. Did you, is this something you followed from the, as a as a child or did you like read? Oh. Is this like, is this like, oh. how, right? How, where, oh. how far does this go? Yeah, so I got into it. It was probably like chapter six hundred already, something like that. Uh-huh. In two thousand ten, same time. Yeah, two thousand. I think two thousand ten. Um, I I got into it when it was still, it was like, um, right the after about right happen. after Thriller Bark, and then oh, Luffy like goes to jail or something like that. I don't know. Uh huh. Around that, around that point. Right, right, right. Okay, I just wanted to know because I'm um because at me I've always been a Naruto fanboy. That's that's the best to me. But I actually love One Piece too. But the, but the thing I'm not even nearly as qualified as all you guys are because I actually only 
you know, started One Piece maybe like a year or two years ago. And I'm literally not even a dent, I don't even think. And so I'm, I'm, I think I'm on like chapter like 200 or something. Okay. Uh, yeah, like, as long as you're reading like manga. Skype, yeah. yeah, I'm reading the manga. What's up, Moss? So aren't you like in Skype right now? Oh, oh yeah. That's what I just remember. And I just, I, you know, it's, it's one of those, or at least someone was telling me like it's one of those, or I mean, this is how I feel about it, but it's a great story. It's just, you, know, you can always drop it real quick, come back. You know what I mean? It'll still be there. Right. So, um, but yeah, I just think it's, it's funny how I guess One Piece is the best. <laughs> One Piece really like shaped me as a person because if there's one thing I really, really love about life, it's freedom. Mm-hmm. And, and freedom is like kind of the theme of One Piece. Like, why is Luffy a pirate? Because he wants to be. That's it. He just, that's what he chooses to do. Um, mm-hmm. And I, I really like that. And you, you, you got to fight for your freedom. You got to be strong, you know, to be free in this world. But mm-hmm. ultimately, that's what One Piece is about. That's why I really like it. And mm-hmm. it, it's very character driven, too. Like every anime, the, sh- the shonen protagonist has a dream. Like, I want to be the best or whatever. Yeah. And But for Luffy, it's, it was never about being a good guy. It was always about doing whatever he wants. Mm. And that's, that's what all the characters in One Piece want to do. They just want to do whatever they want to do. And then, and then if you got you got the crew, you know what I mean? Delving yeah. into their backstories and just going through their own. Their own yeah, side. I think that's where One Piece is. That's where One Piece shines to me the most. Like as as someone who thinks who, who regards Naruto as the best. I mean, I'm, I'm just biased. That, that, was, <laughs> that was my childhood. That was my childhood. But but One Piece, if there's one thing it does well, it's just how character driven it is and how fascinating it is that they just go so deep. Because that's what Naruto and a lot of other shonen suffers from is that like just all this potential but it's kind of wasted because it's not yeah you know what i mean they don't got the, the same forward. time yeah. as so yeah be- beautiful be- uh, beautiful story for sure yeah mm-hmm. i can again i can talk at, at length <laughs> about what i like about <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh i want to say one more thing I wanna, okay. it's kind of like let's hear it it's kind of like continuation yeah. of what i was saying like right, right. it's not and the thing about one piece it, like the characters they have their dreams they want to do whatever they want but in a lot of anime you kind of just they kind of just go for it and they go through the shonen training arcs or whatever. In in One Piece, like yeah, there maybe there's some training arcs, but it's not really about that. Like the 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 thing that makes it so tough for the characters is that they're born, like they have their they have their dream and they're a kid, and then they start realizing this world is really dark and I'm at a huge disadvantage. And mm. I think a lot of people vibe with that because that's how the world really is, right? Yes. And for me, like I, you know, I want to be an artist. My dream is to have an anime studio whatever but like and then you start seeing like okay i have to be i need this amount of finances to be in good shape before i can ever do anything like that and then you start Mm -hmm. seeing oh the world's economy is really corrupt oh the world's politics is really corrupt Uh you start seeing the big picture and that one piece that's really present in one piece because you have these Mm -hmm. characters they they want to do what they want to do when they're kids and then they see that this world is so dark and corrupt and you have to fight that you you have to fight back against that in order to Mm -hmm. be free and that's mm-hmm. that's what I love about the story. Yeah, a lot of these stories tend to be a reflection of what's going on in in, in real life. You yeah. know what I mean? And it's cool to watch them um, succeed. And it's cool to watch them, you know, put up a fight. It's you know, it's, it's cool to watch them just do or just you know pursue what they want to pursue. You know what I mean? Whether it work out or not. But uh, yeah, no, I I I can, I can see that. You know what I mean? So <clears throat> yeah, it's the best. You guys hit all the main points of my life, man. Yeah, hey, let's go, dude. And, and One Piece. <laughs> right. So, so does this mean does this mean when the when the One Piece episode for this does it mean we're gonna have Chokinator back oh, on here? We have to. We have to. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Nick did. <laughs> yeah, dude. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Dude, that sounds that sounds pretty exciting. <laughs> that episode's about to be hell long. <laughs> I'm just gonna say I'm just gonna sit here and enjoy the ride. I'm gonna <laughs> deliberately read spoilers so I can somewhat know what's going on. And then, <laughs> oh, just catch up, man! Just catch up. Just catch up. That too. That too. And we can have this a uh, full blown yeah. discussion. <laughs> yeah, we can talk about oh, it all day. Oh man, yeah, because we still need to have a One Piece episode. We still need the Naruto episode because I've never seen Naruto. Oh, That's and how not- I'm gonna catch up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So. Hey, you'll be in the backseat for that one. Nah, that's going to be me talking the yeah. entire, all, all two hours. <laughs> Complaining. Yeah, not, not, Naruto's I. Right. Right. It's, it's fair. Anyone that says I right, or it sucks, I just say I, I I get it. Like, I don't even argue. Like, I, I can argue for it, but like, it's just, 
I, there's just too many a lot of stuff going against it that i kind of just laugh and be like you know what if you like this show for what it is which is what i do then yeah great but if you like dislike it for any reason i don't even argue i'm like dude that's a valid point like i can't even <laughs> i mean it's, it's pretty at least good. you can I, acknowledge I think... it <laughs> one thing i can say is that kishimoto is really good at drawing <laughs> there's that too yeah i, I agree now, now what about bleach though no. Oh Thank no! You got the right we, okay. <laughs> I, I, I've never seen Bleach with Chokinator's reaction. It, I there's just too many things that just it's just one after another telling me to hey, to chill. Oh, don't okay. gotta know what oh, you're getting into. I can just say in a nutshell, after the Rukia Byakuya arc, it just becomes trash. <laughs> oh no! Yeah, after that, like that's fun. Soul Society, Rukia, Save Rukia. <laughs> And it's just total trash after that. That's all I can say. Oh my, that's so hilarious! I love it. <laughs> yeah, have you guys read it? Have you guys? I was I was reading it. I finished it was crashing and burning. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, I guess I can say that I'm glad I chose. Oh, well, Naruto! I originally was the only one out of the big three. I was really pretty avid anime watcher, or just manga follower, or whatever. But Naruto was really the only one out of the big three, as what they were known at the time. And I'm glad that One Piece was the one I chose instead of Bleach. Yeah. <laughs> to get into. <laughs> I mean, the the new star for Shonen is uh, My Hero Academia, which I'm kind of just starting. I really mm-hmm. want to read the manga because that guy uh, Horikoshi Kohei is also really good at drawing. So. That's probably the main reason I want to read the manga. Just because. Oh yeah, I I, I heavily, I heavily endorse. Masa's also read it. I but I, 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 I heavily endorse the manga. Yeah, it's a yeah. great great read. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. Well, we got to stop it now before this turns into the the manga episode. <laughs> yeah, this, manga. The, this will be the manga episode. I, I really will sit here for. Oh man, but was was fun for sure. It was yeah, definitely yeah, it was, a blast. Was definitely guys. good here. Um, I, I do want to ask before you guys go. Uh, yeah. When are you guys gonna start up? Are you guys gonna start up events again? We're working on it. Uh, you know, just the the biggest difficulty right now is how do we transition back to offline? Yeah. So you know we're looking. We're looking out ways to do it. Uh, we had an online tournament. Signups uh, were open till Wednesday. We had one sign up. So. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. So. Well, I just want to say. Uh, I mean, besides plugging myself, you know, Instagram.com, Twitter.com, slash Um, mm-hmm. I do want to say, if you guys ha- can ever strike up a deal, if I can like set up a table with my art at one of your events, uh, I would love to do that. I've done that. Oh, dude, that'd be dope. If you guys are down. Always welcome. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 100%. I would love to do that. Yeah. Mm. So uh, be on the lookout for Chokenator at the next MWG event. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> mm. uh, it's been great meeting you. It's been great hearing about your origin story in Melee, art, the uh, 209 scene. Uh, I mean, I, first I was inviting Chokenator, and now we had the Hokage here today. It was great. <laughs> oh, did, oh, I had no... <laughs> I had no clue. Goodness, we got a celeb in the we got a celeb in the two hundred nine and the celeb in the in the Leave Village. So, so uh, yeah, like I didn't know you. I'm sorry. You when I put the... it that when you put it that way, I kind of sound like I'm pulling myself. No, no, oh, no, no, no. We no, no I absolutely no. It was actually out of left field, which I absolutely loved because I love Naruto to death. So uh-huh. I just actually glad that you made the <laughs> the analogy. Like, yeah, I had no idea you started the Central Valley uh, Facebook. That was the first place I went to go get uh to go to tournaments. Like, oh yeah, yeah, Central Valley <laughs> Smash two hundred nine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Me, me too. So yes, I I will I, I will gladly uh endorse this uh first Hokage and <laughs> I'm on board. <laughs> All right, well, you gotta put me on one of those Mount Rushmore things. Oh uh, yes. <laughs> All right, oh, man. So, uh, all socials be in the description. Thank you guys for tuning in, and we'll see you next week. Mm, yes. Okay. Goodbye. Bye bye.